Hi everyone, Brian Christopher from Banyan Hill here. Welcome to another edition of Market Insights. This week, I'm talking again with Ian King, editor of Banyan Hill's Automatic Fortunes and Crypto Profit Trader. Ian, welcome, thanks for joining me. Hey Brian, nice to see you. You too, man. For the next few minutes, we wanna talk about something that's absolutely critical to you today and in the future. Before Ian and I chat though, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Then click on the image of a bell to receive an alert whenever we post something. So Ian, let's get into it. This week, we're talking about big data. And I wanna clarify something with you. I think this is super important when we read articles or hear articles on popular topics. I'm not always sure everyone's on the same page because the topic isn't defined or the listener hasn't taken time to learn the meaning. And big data is a great example of this. Everyone hears about it, but I doubt everyone who hears the term has taken the steps to learn what it means. Could you, could you just start by defining big data for us? Sure, Brian, thanks for that question. Now, if you think about the things that you do on a daily basis, and if you're like me, you have a lot of connected devices. If you're on your phone, if you're taking photos, if you're sharing photos, if you've got a Nest thermostat at home, if you've got an Alexa device in your household, all of these connected devices, the internet of things, are capturing things that you're doing, places that you're going, things you're taking photos of. And so that is what we think of as big data because the amount of data that's being captured in the world right now is growing exponentially because of all the new devices that are being added on a daily basis. I mean, if you think about it, we even now have smart toasters that you connect to a Wi-Fi device and you can program the toaster to how, you know, burn you want your piece of toast. I like mine dark brown. And, uh, and so that is part of big data. Now, the other part of this is the how do we take that data and make it into something that is useful for our own purposes. So, for instance, my thermostat knows that I like to sleep at 70 degrees and knows when I'm out of the house, I like the thermostat to go up. So Nest does that. There's an algorithm that sets that for me. So that is another part of big data. But the term kind of encompasses the whole space, the production of it, the capture of it, and then how we refine it and actually use it for our purposes. Okay. You, you once showed me a Forbes article that said AI or artificial intelligence would be nothing without big data. And I've seen you talk about big data's connection to other cutting edge technologies too, and you just referred to it. Internet of Things, autonomous vehicles, and, and 5G. Is it accurate to say big data is the cog that enables all these technologies, or, or, or what would be the correct way to describe the relationship? So the way that we use big data is we have to refine it. And a good analogy is oil. In the early 20th century, specifically 1901, there was a big oil find in Texas. And, but you can't really do anything with crude oil, right? I mean, you have to refine it and use its parts to make plastics, different types of chemicals. Obviously, you can get gasoline and airplane fuel from crude oil that you pull out of the ground. The same goes for data. We have all these unstructured data sets that companies can go in and refine and use for their own purposes. An example of a company that uses big data is Google. Google knows from Google Maps where you go. And then let's say there is a movie theater in town and there are people who are going to the movie theater different types of day and they're programming in this movie theater on their Google Maps as they're driving there. Google takes all the times that people search for that location and arrive at that location, and then they can tell you when the movie theater is crowded and when it's not. So they can tell you that on Tuesday night, the eight o'clock showing at the movie theater will probably not be that crowded because not that many people visit there. I mean, it's obvious the Friday and Saturday nights are going to be, but outside of movie theaters, you can do that for any business using Google Maps. And that is an example of how a company uses big data to kind of improve uh, our relationship and our understanding of our environment. Yeah, make, makes, makes life easier. Um, I also read in one of your reports that medical errors are the third leading cause of death in the US. What, what can big data do to help us eradicate this? Well, I think that we can share the best practices. You know, you can look at the outcomes 
uh, from different health reports, or let's say someone gets a knee surgery and there are different doctors all across the country that perform this knee surgery differently, we can see how long the patient took uh, to recover. And you know, we can make our, our best judges by, you, we can use a best practice, sorry, by taking all this information and kind of compiling it in a way that we can do better research on it. So I think that's one way that big data can help healthcare. I, you know, I think another big aspect of this space and something that I've been looking at recently, uh, I wear this heart rate tracker everywhere I go. And it's a great fitness band because it gives me biofeedback. It actually tells me you know, how much I slept at night, uh, how uh, much I need to work out on a specific day in order to maintain my fitness. And I think that's another piece of data that eventually hospitals and the medical community is going to be able to see everyone's data on this and we'll be able to make assumptions and correlations in terms of, okay, this person has a higher risk of heart disease because they're getting less sleep at night or they're not exercising for 20 or 30 minutes a day. And I think that's another innovation where we are sharing data with the cloud, but then other companies are coming in and mining that data for very useful insights that can be you know, put to uh, work in their own business practices. But, yeah, that's right. After I saw what you said about medical errors, I, I checked to see which, if any, companies in the space were seeing outsized buying by their executives, because that's something that I like to look at. Um, you know, insiders know more about what their company is doing really more than anybody. So I found one company that fit the bill and the company is called Innovalon, the ticker is I-N-O-V, and it does exactly what you were saying. It uses the, crowd, the cloud to aggregate and analyze large amounts of healthcare data. Then it helps its healthcare clients use and uh, kind of use the insights from the information that, 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 that they glean to more efficiently serve their patients. I mean, it's critical in an era of ever growing healthcare costs. But what I noticed was that most of these healthcare focused software companies have little to no insider buying, but Innovalon showed some solid buying really uh, for the year from May, 2018 to May, 2019, their, their buying included uh, both, uh, both uh, before the run-up in the stock, as well as, as well as part of the run-up. So because the insiders were buying between 10 and $13 a share, I mean, it's trading at $17 today, sales and free, ca free cash flow are both up. And uh, it's just, it, it, it really, that concept really kind of partners these things that we're talking about in terms of, uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, big data, as well as, uh, you know, where, where do we want to be? How do we want to participate in this, in this, in this big data environment? Um, and, and so I just, I, I found that, I found that very interesting. And, uh, I guess we should, uh, we should, we should wrap up because we're running a little bit later than intended. Uh, we do want to let our, our readers and enjoy, enjoy the, our listeners enjoy the weekend. But, um, one last thing, I know you write about big data in your automatic fortunes letter. Um, I mean, this letter has a, super reasonable price for the amount of information you provide and there's a money back guarantee so it seems to me like a no lose situation people who are interested in big data should sign up how can our viewers learn more about your service uh thanks brian uh well they can go to our website bandionhill.com they can read any of my articles uh and just search for automatic fortunes uh, on the web but That's thank right. you. I appreciate the uh, the pitch there. Thanks, Brian. Um, oh, no doubt. Th thanks for your time and your insights, Ian. I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. And and yeah, you bet. And we'll also, uh, we'll have our editor include a link to uh, some more information about automatic fortunes. So, and everybody who's listening today can, can, can learn more about this, which is, in my mind, absolutely essential. Um, We'll have a brand new edition of Market Insights for you guys next Saturday. So please make sure to look in your look look in your email for that. Um, on behalf of Ian, Jeff Yastine, Mike Carr, Ted Bauman, all of us at Sovereign Investor Daily, thanks for watching.